Um, another thing you often feel is, um, hmm, it has to do with aging. Novelty is not as uh, much of an instant ticket for me as it used to be. I mean, I really was someone who wanted to try everything once and maybe three or four times just to make sure <laughs> I had an opinion about it. <laughs> and um, and uh, that kind of thing that when I answer, for example, I get questions from young people, sort of, you know, dear Susie Sexpert, and like, what about anal sex? Or, you know, I've been thinking about a threesome. And I remember feeling like that. You know, it's just tremendous. I wonder what that's like. And um, now it's not that kind of, um, I have that intellectual wonderment about things, but not that first timer, oh my God, you know, jumping into that end of the pool for the first time. Uh, my sex life in terms of who my partners are these days, well, first of all, I guess I have to say as a, as a committed, um, uh, you know, Betty Dots and Accolade Light, as long as I have my own fantasy and masturbation life, I will consider myself wildly sexually active. I mean, for me, that is, you know, that's where it all begins. I don't give a shit if I never touch another person, if I'm chilling off. I'm having a sex life, thank you very much. But, and it's also the way I gauge where I'm at, like, am I, am I horny? Am, am I entering menopause or not? Am I this, and, you know, everything is around, uh, it's like my temperature taking of myself. And then I have a long-term partner who I feel really comfortable with, and I have all the pleasures of familiarity, mm -hmm. which uh, I like a lot and this sense of being really wanted and desired. I'm sure we, we really do have rose-colored glasses on about each other because I really think he's so beautiful and, you know, he says, you know, it's genuine. We look at each other with kind of, you know, stars in our eyes. As much as we quarrel and so on, the sexual chemistry and the romantic chemistry is, is still there. And then with, um, with other people, it's, um, it's funny you're asking me this because I just came off a book tour and book tours are the best time <laughs> to, to meet new friends. <laughs> just, you know, because you know, everybody knows you're leaving and so you, um, there's this sense of what a wonderful moment in time we have to, to encounter each other without wondering what does this mean for tomorrow, you know. It's it, vacation sex it's, with, it's with vac momentum. It's, exactly. So, uh, that's really nice, and I kind of would put those into two categories. Um, I don't know how to say this without sounding like such a pill. Um, sometimes, and this really hasn't happened in a long time to me because I avoid it, but I thought someone was attracted to me, and we started making out, and then they asked me if they could show me their manuscript. And it's like... <laughs> Why don't you just give me a clitorectomy while you're at it? I mean, what a uh, what a bring down. Yeah. I mean, I, I just felt awful about it. Like, I thought you thought I was cute. <laughs> and you just want to use me as a publishing opportunity. Now, I, I'm very oversensitive about this. You know, like, I would much rather walk into the hardware store and just have some random plumber check out my ass who doesn't know who I am. It'd be so much more thrilling to me. Or be, you know, if I went to the Castro Street Fair today and somebody gave me a second glance, I would be so flattered, right? But um, so that sense of somebody being attracted to me because they are aware of my reputation, they hope I can help them along in life, I have other friends who think there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm going to bring up Betty Dodson again. She, she, was, she had an argument with me about this. She's like, if you're going to be a dirty old lady, you need to turn this shit around. <laughs> People want to fuck you because you're famous, you say yes. <laughs> you say, sure, honey, put your manuscript over there and I'll take your pants off. You know, like, you just, you know, of course they want to be mentored. Of course they want to kind of, they're... <laughs> what, you think they think you've got the best tits they've ever seen? No. They, you know, they are attracted to you because of what you've done, so work with it. You know, like, don't, you know, stop, uh, 
stop just saying, no, you know, acting like a Jane Austen novel. You don't love the real me. <laughs> like you, I'm like, okay, okay, you have a point. Just haven't wrapped my mind around that. I think it's because my erotic identity, a lot of it is me looking up to you. I always fell in love with mentors, and I always was attracted to older people. And I'm still attracted to people 20 years older than me. I, I, I always was um, like, they're the ones who know everything. And it was really easy for me to eroticize that relationship and be disinterested in people my own age. And yet to turn that around and be the one who's the, the, the guru and is um, being courted by someone, I, I'm kind of awkward with that. I, I agree with it, theoretically, I'm all for it, but I, I, my, I haven't wrapped my clit around it. <laughs> so this whole interview is just a way to seduce you, it's probably off target. <laughs> <laughs> Try dressing up in a plumber's outfit and meeting me in a hardware store, okay? <laughs> Try it, yeah. Work, works for me. I've got overalls. <laughs> i got overalls. Um, so... Well, so this is now. I'm now. I'm curious about star fucking. Star fucking. Yes. So I mean, for for you, now being the the object of people's admiration, uh -huh. and that being eroticized, um, where, like, I mean, how does anybody want to know how we're supposed to hit on me? <laughs> Thank you. How are we supposed to hit on me? Just one or two things. Well, you're gonna. You're setting me off in another direction because uh, one part of my uh, my odd autobiography is when I was a teenager, you know, in puberty, coming of age, I left my mother's care and I went to live with my father who taught at UCLA and lived in a, a little canyon between Sunset and Mulholland that was sort of the hippie canyon between Bel Air, Coldwater, Benedict. And it was where a lot of people who worked below the line in show business lived at the time. So you had, and some struggling actors and musicians and so on, but lots of engineers and producers and just the people who comprise the Hollywood colony. And I um, would, a lot of it was undeveloped and I'd be playing up in the hills, smoking pot and playing green light, red light and mother may I and spin the bottle with kids who ended up being on the Brady Bunch and the Partridge family. And, um, I lost my technical virginity to a fellow who at the time was desperately frightened and unemployed because he'd lost his gig on soap operas, but would later go on to great fame on, you know, other televisions, you know, dramas and sci-fi shows and so on. And what I noticed about that time, I was the one having sex with people who were a little bit famous or being groomed to be famous. And, uh, they were such a hot mess. I mean, it, 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 you know, whenever people start bitching about the sad, pitiable lives of porn stars, oh my God, someone send a rescue bus, and you know, <coughs> you know what, what they've been through, bullshit. They have been through nothing compared to child actors. Those kids on those, those shows, the Bradys and the Partridges, it's, it blows your mind. Lindy, Lindsay Lohan, Britney Spears, oh, that's just, you barely know how awful it is. They get fucked by everyone. That whole thing that happened with Roman Polanski and the, uh, in, the hot tub. in the hot tub with the young woman and now she's of age and they, they're still looking to prosecute him even though quite a bit of time has gone on and there was a debate over what to do about it. It just reminded me like that could have been me or any number of people I knew in a minute. That was just another day at the office in the Hollywood colony. And what was really, what was really frightening, was the parents who would often be behind this pimping out of their really young children to do anything, absolutely anything, to be a star, no matter how gross and corrupt. I mean, it was pity, pitiable. 